Lord, I ask that the message that is given and the words that are spoken will be yours. And we, as we gather as your people, Lord, we ask that the way that you use this message to change our lives will be according to your will. We'll give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory for everything that you will do because of it. In Jesus' name. Uh, you might hear like to watch movies. I like to watch movies when I have time. I don't have a lot of time, but when I watch movies, I like those adventure movies. One of the movies that I always like, and I've seen it a couple of times, is National Treasure. In National Treasure, you've got a guy, Benjamin Gates, who's, who's uh, played by, uh, what, what's the other name? Yeah, Nicholas Cage, there you go. And, and his family has always been looking for clues and treasure maps to this, this ultimate treasure that was stashed away by the founding fathers. I see some of y'all seen the movie. And, and so it's a really nice, you know, it's a nice adventure and it's a great film. Well, there's one part where they have to go and steal the Declaration of Independence. Because <laughs> on the back of it is a map, which is a very daunting task anyway. So, so Nicholas Cage is standing there with his sidekick, Riley, and he's reading. And the words that he reads are, when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. And then he looks at Riley and he says, you know, people just don't talk about that anymore. And then they don't, do they? I mean, most of our conversations and the conversations we hear are so simple. You know, one of the things that we talk to the youth about as often as we can is, is you know, how we should talk, how we should carry ourselves, the conversations we should have. I know William's getting tired of hearing all that. But, but, but that's important. You, you don't hear that kind of speech anymore. Well, that's kind of how I feel when I sit down and I pick up the Gospel of John. Because when you pick up the other Gospels and you begin to read, it's a little more friendly, it's a little easier. You don't have to don't have to consider as much to understand what the gospel writer is trying to tell you, at least to me. You know. They're trying to tell you the story of Jesus. You've got what happened before the birth, you've got the birth, and then you've got his ministry and his teachings. Well, John does the same thing, only he doesn't talk like they do. He talks a little different. He not only tells you what happened, he tells you what it means as he goes along. And so as we read John 1, 1 through 18 this morning, I want you to consider several things. First, I want you to consider that he starts off with in the beginning, which reminds us of the first book of the Bible, Genesis, and the, the first words that we read there, in the beginning. You know, before anything existed was in the beginning. The second thing that he uses is he talks about the word, and it's capitalized, W-O-R-D. He says, in the beginning was the word. It's capitalized because it means someone. It's an entity. It's an existence. It's like a noun, like a name. And the word that he uses is actually logos, as he's writing the original Greek. And I'm going to do a terrible injustice because I don't have two hours to spend talking about that word and what it really means. And Jesse knows what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to paraphrase it and summarize it by saying, the word, the logos, means the character, the quality, the being, and the very essence of God. The pre-incarnate Christ. Then he uses the word light. And he, he talks of this word light as an illumination to life. Think about that. Then he uses life. And as he talks about the life in this scripture reading, I'm reminded of Jesus saying that I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. And then he goes on and he says, I've come that those who believe in me might have an abundant life. Not riches, but an abundance of peace and understanding, an abundance of grace and joy and hope and peace. And all those things we've been celebrating for the last five weeks through Advent and Christmas, all the things we've been reminded of, that's what the abundant life is about. Then he uses the word fullness as he talks about Jesus. 
The fullness is the sum total of all that is God. And finally, he talks about God's grace. The ultimate gift of love and forgiveness and abundance that can only come from God. Please listen for this reading of the Lord's Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word. And without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life. And the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness does not extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. And he came as a witness to testify concerning this light. So that through him, everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light. But his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world talking about Christ and his ministry. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light, but the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people did not welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized them to become God's children, not born from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. <clears throat> the Word became flesh and made His home among us. He dwelt among us. We have seen His glory, glory like that of a Father's only Son, full of grace and full of truth. John testified about Him, crying out, This is the one of whom I said, he who comes after me is greater than me because he existed before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. As the law was given through Moses, so grace and truth came into being through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. God, the only Son, who is at the Father's side, has made God known. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. What a wonderful way to talk. What a wonderful way to write. I can't even begin to imagine how long we can study on those 18 verses. Jesse, what would you think? A few years? You know, I think that every verse deserves a week's worth of consideration. But that's how John writes, because he wants us to understand so much more than just what the words say. But the one thing I want to focus on this morning as we begin a new year is down near the end. He says, Christ brings grace upon grace. Now, if you've been on a walk to Emmaus, you've heard a lot about grace. And I hope that, even if you haven't been, and, and I hope that you'll get an opportunity to go, that you would understand that grace really is a word that simply means gift. That's what it, in its simplest form, that's what it means. Because the grace that God gives is not something that we can, we can earn. It's not something that we can uh, keep a tally on a board and, and when we get to a certain point, we win. It's completely a gift. It's a gift of God's forgiveness. It's a gift of that abundant life that Jesus talked about. Uh, not, not riches, but about riches and peace and joy and happiness, no matter what the situation around you is. See, that's what grace really boils down to. And as we enter into this new year, we consider all of the grace that's been poured out upon us. As John put it, grace upon grace. I mean, it's, it's like having the best cake in the world, and then they add the frosting. Okay? And then they come in with some more stuff to put on top. And then some more stuff to put on top of that. I don't know what your favorite toppings are, but there's more of each one that you can eat. Grace 
upon grace. That is the gift that is given to us through Christ. That's the gift that we receive when we receive him as our Lord and Savior and follow him and his teachings. Grace upon grace. And as we enter into this new year, I pray that we'll consider that the reason that we are blessed with this is so that we can bless others. The reason we're extended grace is so we can extend it into all parts of our life. It needs to permeate who we are. It needs to replace every ill feeling that we've ever had. I mean, you guys understand. I know y'all don't harbor ill feelings toward anybody, right? I know you don't have any grudges, right? I know you're not upset at the pastor because he didn't print out the readings and the lyrics today, and the, right? No, I'm just but seriously, God's grace is that which forgives us as soon as we turn to him. 1 John 1, 9 says that our God is faithful and just. I would, I would almost argue with the writer of that scripture and say, oh no, he's way above that. But it says he's faithful and just. And as soon as we turn to him and call to mind what we've done wrong, we're forgiven. It's like the slate is wiped clean. Now, those of you who used to go to school and there was a chalkboard, you remember what it was like to clean the slate. You know, that, that nice green or black paint gets a little dusty and dirty because of all the chalk, but, but once a month or so, they would break out this really good smelling solvent and they would wipe it on the board and it'd be just like new. And that's the way it works with God because of His grace. And that's the way it should work through us as we live our lives. We should be giving generously and abundantly because we have received the same. We have received it first so we could share it with others. And I'm not talking about just money. I'm not talking about just talents. I'm talking about grace. I'm talking about forgiveness. I'm talking about prayer. I'm talking about the things that we sometimes feel like we don't have time to do or we don't have enough resources to give. They're all God's anyway. They've been given to us in abundance, <laughs> grace upon grace, so that we can continue to give to others. I went through uh, the financials, and as I, I, I do the annual report once a year, and it was, it was due into the district office on Tuesday. I emailed all that stuff in last night, so we're good. But one of the things I was so grateful for with our congregation here is the amount of our monies that we give to charities and benevolences. I mean, it's really good. I don't know any other church that, that, that matches up percentage-wise. I really don't. And I'm, I'm very impressed and I'm very grateful. But I look forward to the, the time when we can do even more. So I hope that you will pray about that. I hope that we'll consider even more benevolences. There are more uh, worthwhile causes out there that we don't know about yet. But they may be presented to us this year. And I hope that they are. Because I realize that we have a very loving and giving congregation. And so I celebrate that with you. I celebrate the fact that we give. So that others might be blessed. And I'm grateful. And I hope that, that as we are presented with new opportunities in the coming year. We'll meet them with the same graciousness and grace that we've been given. I don't have anything specific to bring before you today to beat you up and say you got to do this or you got to do that. But what I do want to do today is remind us that we have received grace upon grace. And as we go into this new year, I hope that one of your resolutions will be to extend even more grace in every area of your life, whether it's financial giving, whether it's giving of time, whether it's giving of yourself in other ways. Whether it's forgiving someone who has wronged you or forgiving yourself when you fail at something that you thought was important. Grace upon grace is the way that we've been raised into this newness of life through Jesus Christ. And grace upon grace is the way that we should be living through Him. Grace upon grace. In this new year, that can be. In the name of the Father and the Son.
One of the ways that we are reminded of God's grace